Welcome, movie lovers. Today, we're diving into a hilarious and heartwarming Chinese sci-fi comedy, Moon Man. It blends science fiction with touching human moments. It is directed by Zhang Qiyu and stars Shen Tang, a comedic powerhouse in China. Released in July 2022, Moon Man follows the story of Dugu Yuo, an unconventional astronaut who embarks on a critical mission to deflect a colossal asteroid threatening Earth. However, a twist of fate leaves him stranded on the moon, presumed dead. With no one but his wits and a few quirky survival hacks, Dugu Yuo faces the lunar wilderness. But just when all seems lost, an unexpected encounter introduces a new twist filled with laughter and surprising warmth. While the film is light on complexity, its charm lies in its ability to weave themes of loneliness, resilience, and friendship into its comedic fabric. Although some jokes may carry a cultural nuance that might not translate universally, the overall experience is a heartfelt laugh fest. So are you ready to see how Dugu Yue navigates his lunar misadventures? Let's dive into Moon Man and find out if the protagonist can chart a course back to Earth or if he's destined to be the moon's eternal comedian. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to my channel to stay updated with all the exciting content coming your way. All right, let's begin. The film begins with Duga interviewing for an engineer position at the moon space station. His resume shows his experience is very average. He justifies that he intentionally built himself to be mediocre as the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. The interviewer hires him as maintenance personnel instead and he soon finds himself in a rocket to the moon. Mars's gravity ceases, and one of its asteroids, Pi, turns its course to Earth. To prevent the disaster, people created the United Nations Moon Shield, or UNMS project, to use the moon as Earth's shield. They fortified the moon's space station, made a helium-3 superweapon called Cosmic Striking Hame to destroy Pi, and used its gravity to attract the remaining debris to protect Earth. After eight years of meticulous planning, the missiles are launched and the massive asteroid is successfully destroyed. Earth was deemed out of danger. During the eight years, he has been secretly in love with Ma, their commander. Now that the Earth's problem is resolved, Dugu thinks it is time to resolve his personal issue. While the crew celebrates their breakthrough and prepares to return home, Dugu is in his office repeating his confessing words. Suddenly, from the window, he sees Ma driving the lunar rover back to base from the launch site. Then he rushes out of the room and prepares to confess his feelings to Ma. In the cabin hall, a colleague grabs him and asks him to help take a celebrating photo. Just at this moment, the cabin gate opens and Ma comes in. Everyone quickly scampers away and pretends to be back to their busy working condition. Ma thinks Dugu is strolling in the hall and not working. Then, Ma reprimands him for being lazy and sends him back to his room. In his office, wearing headphones, he is still engrossed in figuring out how to confess to Ma. He is thinking to himself, how about writing her a letter? At this moment, Ma's right-hand man, Ju, informs the commander that a solar storm caused their weapons to swerve from their original path, leaving some of the asteroid fragments heading toward the UNMS moon station and colliding with the moon in less than 30 minutes. Ma announces an emergency evacuation as the space station is within the range of the colliding impact. As everyone heads to the space shuttles, Dugu, oblivious to the warning alerts, finishes his love letter for the commander. Finally noticing the urgency, he rushes to catch the last shuttle. With seven minutes left, he sees six shuttles remain, but five launch simultaneously, leaving only one. Dugu tries to contact his team but communication lines are down, so he yells in frustration. Despite a vast crater ahead, he drives to the shuttle but falls into it. Climbing out, he, in despair, watches the last shuttle leave as asteroid debris hits the moon. He runs for his life, aiming to hide in a crater, only to be blown away by more debris. Fainting, he misses a massive asteroid fragment passing by. Awakening, he yells in frustration, trying to console himself by declaring it's easy to spot him from Earth. Unfortunately, the massive asteroid debris hits Earth, destroying his home planet. For six days, he tries to contact Earth but fails. Fortunately, he has enough supplies to last a lifetime. He holds a funeral for everyone who perished. Dugu decides to fulfill his heart's desires before leaving the world. 
One wishes to spend time in Ma's room, but he fails to input the lock code. Another is to go moon surfing, which ends in a comedic fall. Determined, he tries all possible passwords on Ma's door, and after successfully moon surfing and erasing Armstrong's footprint, he loses patience and blows the door open. He prepares for a date with Ma's picture on a chair, but splatters ketchup on it and then licks it off her nose, pretending he is kissing his love. Unbeknownst to him, the UMS crew is watching all his behaviors through surveillance cameras, turning away in embarrassment. Ma remains poker-faced as Ju reassures her that only those in the room can see. She drinks boiling water in shock. When they check for communication with Dugu, they find only videos accessible. Chairman Yang informs her that they will broadcast Dugu's story in 30 days. He explains Earth's dire situation. 30% of the land is submerged, volcanic gas is spreading, and escalating depression, food shortages, and diseases. Ma updates her staff, deciding to make Dugu a public hero. Ju points out Dugu's unheroic behavior, but Ma suggests dubbing his voice to create a positive image. Ma reads a script she made broadcasting the false story of Dugu, sacrificing his seat in the shuttle to save a crew member. She announces that in 30 days, they'll show his live footage to give everyone hope. Lassie, a trusted crew member, asks about skeptics, and Ma confidently declares they must be convinced, though doubters have gone missing. 196 days later, Dugu decides to reunite with his dead love when he sees his love photograph and complains about various suicide attempts. He suddenly finds an empty medicine bottle by the bedside. Yes, perhaps taking pills is the most comfortable way to commit suicide. With the empty medicine bottle, he speaks to Ma's picture, wondering whether this is your guiding him from beyond. He then decides to head to the warehouse to search for medicine. Simultaneously, the video feed on Earth is cut, and the only remaining voice actor, the flutist, arrives at the base. He's given no scripts, but is confident. As the crew counts down for the live airing, Dugu opens the warehouse and sees a voluptuous silhouette. He approaches, thinking it's a woman, but discovers it's a muscular kangaroo. Just in time, the live stream begins. The voice actor, with no clear instructions, dubs the kangaroo and greets everyone with a beautiful day, while Ma pulls his hair to prevent the dubbing disaster. Unfortunately, she's too late, and everyone hears the kangaroo talk. The airing is cut as Ma and Ju report to the chairman. Ma explained that the research department had left an ill-tempered kangaroo named King Kong Ru. Then Ju explains that he is duped and the flutist is just a funny voiceover on an unknown platform. The influencer offers to play a song, but Ma furiously beats him. They finally decide to narrate the video rather than dub it. Meanwhile, Kong has taken over the warehouse. Determined to get the medicine, Dugu dresses as a female kangaroo to attract Kong. The animal tries to procreate with him but Dugu escapes, revealing himself. Angered, Kong kicks him while the flutist laughs hysterically. Viewers watch as Ma angrily beats the influencer again. The commander takes accountability and kicks out the flutist, but is called to another commotion. Dugu faces Kong with a 3D Gatling gun, and everyone watches eagerly. Just as they are impressed, the situation reverses. Kong shows its fighting prowess, while the flutist plays his flute broadcasted through his headphones. Ma kicks his flute away, and at the same time, Kong delivers a final kick to Dugu, making him faint. The commander tries to reach Dugu by means of communication, but it doesn't work. Dugu awakens, seeing movement in the monitor. This again lights a glimmer of hope in Dugu that maybe humanity has survived. However, unbeknownst to him, it's revealed that the signal was caused by the kangaroo's tail. After regaining the will to return home, Dugu emotionally tells Kong that they might have a chance to return home again. However, the kangaroo ruins the moment and punches him again. 224 days have passed since the incident, and Dugu has learned to coexist with the kangaroo. He has conjured up an escape plan to Earth. He wants to utilize the spacecraft left behind by Mission Apollo 18 to launch himself to a nearby space station and use its escape pods to return to Earth. Dugu and Kong dress in spacesuits to retrieve the broken Apollo 18. The UNMS finds a lunar dog robot to assist Dugu, seeing it as their greatest hope. 
Finally, Dugu rebuilds the craft, earning Ju's admiration despite being just a maintenance guy. Ma hands Dugu's file to Ju, revealing he's a flight dynamics engineer, not just a maintenance worker. On day 282, Dugu and Kong note the craft's weight limit due to a broken engine. Dugu decides to leave Kong, speeding ahead on the rover. Moments later, Kong catches up and headlocks him. Later, Dugu recalls that they can use the prototype of the asteroid weapon as an engine. Because of the danger, he tells Kong to stay, but the kangaroo insists on joining. He knows the journey may take weeks, as the rocket's research building is on the other side of the moon. After gearing up with the necessary essentials, Dugu immediately ventures out with Kong to retrieve the nuclear rocket. Back on Earth, Commander Ma and the others watch them anxiously because Dugu's vehicle is solely solar-powered, and the sun only shines on the moon's surface for 14 days per lunar cycle. This means the car can only travel 6,500 kilometers, but the research building is situated 8,000 kilometers away from Dugu's base. After the sun sets on the moon, Dugu will be stranded in the middle of nowhere and freeze to death. When all hope seems lost, Ma and the others notice that Dugu is headed in the opposite direction. He plans to chase the sunlight as the moon only rotates at 16 kilometers per hour. This gives Dugu precisely 41 days to complete his mission, where he can only sleep for four hours daily. With the days passing by, he becomes very dreary and even starts hallucinating. No way Kong keeps stimulating him by tying a red string in Dugu's hair to make him awake and keep going. After exhausting days of driving, they arrive at their destination to retrieve the engine. Kong accidentally triggers a countdown. Fortunately, it's only an inspection countdown. They return to the vehicle and Dugu locks Kong away to avoid mishaps. It's a long and rough journey, so Dugu plays loud music to keep himself entertained. Unaware the cart separates from the primary vehicle. Realizing it is too late, Dugu contemplates moving forward but emotionally turns back to save Kong, gaining the viewers and Ma's approval. After hours of traveling in the opposite direction, he makes it to the truck and reunites with his friend. Kong licks him gratefully. Dugu jokes about taking punches better, and Dugu gets another punch from Kong. Despite computation suggesting failure, the flutist encourages not giving up. Ma commands tracking the vehicle as they excavate the lunar dog for extra batteries. With 142 hours of sunlight left, Dugu drives 53 hours without sleep. As the dreaded sunset arrives, the vehicle switches to battery mode, giving them another five hours. Finally, the lunar dog is out to find them. However, due to the power saving mode, UMS can't track their location when the cabin turns frozen. Eventually, the car runs out of battery and comes to a halt 55 kilometers away from their base. Wearing their spacesuits, which last five hours outdoors, Ju volunteers to pilot the lunar dog, which must jump over a crater to save time. However, the lunar dog falls into a cliff, disappointing everyone. Meanwhile, Dugu and Kong sit on the ground. Dugu sentimentally states he doesn't want to be a star when he dies, because he'll be far from the one he loves. He reminisces about Ma, but realizes Kong is not by his side, chasing the reflection of his compact mirror with Ma's picture. An idea suddenly strikes him. He creates a kangaroo sled and uses light to attract Kong to race. UMS celebrates as a trained kangaroo can reach 30 kilometers per hour on the moon. Dugu initially panics due to Kong's speed, but his moon surfing practice proves helpful. Facing a cliff, he removes the nitrogen tank covers on Kong's reins, and they successfully reach the other side. Dugu eventually brings back the giant warhead and prepares for his return to Earth. Ma also informed the chairman that communication channels would be restored soon. When everyone is in a cheerful time, a massive piece of the asteroid Pi lurks. Later, Dugu receives another signal and becomes hopeful that the surviving humans on Earth are trying to contact him. Unfortunately, his happiness soon turns into disappointment when he sees it coming because the kangaroo messes with the wires. Hence, Dugu again loses hope and decides to abort his mission. However, the people back on Earth refuse to let him give up and think of an idea to contact him. One day, Dugu prepares to take his life, bidding goodbye to Kong and making his epitaph. On Earth, all of them gather at one particular place and collectively shine their flashlights towards the moon. 
The flashlights should form a sentence. You are not alone. However, because a Chinese character was omitted, it humorously turned into, you are not human. Dugu notices the signal and is moved to tears, realizing he is not the only human alive. Dugu is happy seeing Ma daily. When the spacecraft is completed, Dugu finds Ma alone and confesses why he joined the maintenance department. Years ago, he declined the job offer but saw Ma by the escalator, so he agreed to be with her. Ma confesses she saw Dugu on the evacuation day but couldn't wait for him. Shocked, Dugu asks if she would do the same thing now. Ma affirms she would do the same thing, but Dugu declares that's why he loves her. They retire for the night, missing the radar signal of an incoming asteroid. The next day, Dugu and Kong prepare to return home. With UNMS guidance, their makeshift spacecraft launches smoothly. While the humans home celebrates, Dugu reaches the lunar space station and prepares to enter the escape pods. But Ju urgently calls Ma about the debris called Pi Plus approaching Earth. The chairman declares that only Dugu, with the cosmic weapon on his ship, can save them. Ma instructs to cut the live stream, leaving viewers in suspense. Dugu excitedly tells Ma the escape pods are in good condition. Before Ma can relay the grim news, Dugu reveals he already knows through his headphones. He must manually pilot the spacecraft as the missile has no engine and little chance of survival. Dugu proclaims he'll do it to protect everyone but ask Ma not to remain a widow if he doesn't return. Everyone on Earth is instructed to stay underground as UNMS announces the danger of Pi Plus, especially the possibility of Earth's destruction. Dugu buckles up Kong, reminding him to enjoy his time on Earth and procreate. The kangaroo struggles to stay with Dugu, but they separate and Dugu faces a meteor shower. He maneuvers skillfully, but is still hit, causing the spacecraft to spin uncontrollably. He decompresses the craft by opening a compartment, finally stopping. Dugu reports the missile is operational, but the engine is gone. Ma informs him that Pi Plus will pass by him. Dugu reassures Ma, asking her to continue doing her job. Ma refuses to sacrifice him, but Dugu insists. He requests his ship's flight path be diverted to the asteroid and asks to turn on the live stream for his final moments. As he detaches the missile to his cockpit, he thanks everyone for their support, realizing his mission is to stand between the asteroid and Earth. Dugu propels the missile towards Pi Plus, singing Ma's favorite song. Everyone cries for him, including Ma. His spacesuit begins to crack and disintegrate as he nears the asteroid, but he remains determined. With shaking hands, Ma hesitates then finally presses the detonator at Dugu's gentle request to take him home. The asteroid breaks into pieces with a huge blast, and UMS stares at the white screen. Survivors watch the asteroid pieces fall like shooting stars while Kong solemnly observes. Everyone pays respect, and a child asks her brother if they can go home. The brother affirms, calling Dugu a moon man. Ten years later, Earth has recovered faster than imagined. Ma and Zhu ride the first space shuttle to the moon in a decade. Moments later, Ma and her new crew arrive at the moon station. She envisions Dugu welcoming her with a wide grin. The two stare at each other, and Ma smiles with tears in her eyes. She goes to Dugu's epitaph and stands beside his image, telling him how the fragments of Pi Plus formed a ring around Earth, symbolizing Moon Man's return. In the final scene, the base remains filled with memories of Earth's hero, especially his love letter to Ma. Dugu's story is one of resilience, hope, and the power of humor in the face of insurmountable odds. Moon Man leaves us with a powerful message. Even in the darkest moments, laughter can light the way, and a single individual can make a difference. The film's blend of comedy and heroism ensures it remains an unforgettable journey through space in the human heart. Thanks for joining me for this recap. What did you think of Dugu's out-of-this-world journey? If you found this recap engaging, please like, share, and comment with your insights. Don't forget to subscribe for more enthralling stories like Moon Man. Catch you in the following video.